Hello again and welcome to another day of Bible study. Uh, we're continuing through the Gospel according to John. Today we're going to finish up the Gospel, or, uh, chapter 8. We're going to start here at uh, verse 48. Um, but first, let's pray. Uh, loving God, we thank you that uh, you challenge us and that you remind us of what it means to follow you. Uh, Lord, it's so easy for us to measure you by what we think we know. Uh, by what we've seen you do in the past and what we hope you might do in the future. And, Lord, when you come along and do something totally different from that, uh, we're not always ready for it. So, Lord, keep us just to see where you're at work and that we can follow you wherever you go. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, we're picking up here in verse 48 where it says, The Jews answered and said to him, Jesus, Do, you, do we not say rightly that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Uh, Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. But I do not seek my glory. There is one who seeks and judges. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died and the prophets also. And you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will, ne he will never taste death. Surely you are not greater than our father Abraham who died. The fathers died too, or the prophets died too. Whom do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, if I glory myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. And you have not come to know him, but I know him. And if I say that I do know, if I say that I do not know him, I will be a liar like you. But I do know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, "You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham?" Jesus said to them, "Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was born, I am." Therefore they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. So here we have, again, a couple things. One, we're kind of continuing a theme. If you recall back when Jesus met with the woman at the well, uh, one of the things that she said was, it was our, our forefather, Jacob, who gave us this well. And she raised the question, you're not greater than Jacob, are you? And, and it's almost like it's, it's a question that when she asked it, she couldn't possibly imagine that the answer to that question would be, yes, Jesus is greater than Jacob. Uh, and and here we have it again. You know, you're not greater than Abraham, are you? You're not greater than the prophets, are you? Because in their mind, it, it couldn't be possible. You couldn't possibly be greater than, than Abraham and the prophets. And yet we see that once again, Jesus actually is greater than, than Abraham and the prophets. And, and it, we can see that they understood what he was trying to get at because once again, we read at the end, therefore they picked up stones to throw at him, which is, uh, you know, um, uh, Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. So we, we had this earlier where Jesus was saying, for which of my good deeds are you going to stone me? And they say, we're going to stone you for a good deed but they, because you, though only a man, have made yourself equal to God. And I think it's really important to realize that um, every once in a while you will hear somebody say something along the lines of Jesus didn't really know or didn't believe that he was God. He was just kind of a messenger from God. And the problem with that is we have moments like this where Jesus is saying things like, you know, uh, my father, who is your God, you know, he, <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, yeah, it is my father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. So Jesus is saying, the one you call God, I call father. And uh, and, and does in a way where it's, it's, okay, so it's interesting also because in the last passage, um, these same leader, people uh, said that we only have one father and that is God. And the thing is, that wasn't necessarily scandalous, but Jesus saying, um, God is my father uh, is, is scandalous. And the reason why is because this notion of God being the father to his people uh, was a common one throughout the scriptures and throughout the tradition. Um, but the idea that Jesus would say, G G God's not just our father, and he's not just my father because I am one of God's people, but he is my father uh, in a very specific, particular sense. Everybody interpreted that as saying that he was equal to God. And in fact, we saw that in, you know, earlier when we said they were going to pick up stones to stone him. Um, so here we have, once again, Jesus saying, um, not actually saying the words, I am God or I am God's son, uh, but saying everything but those words directly. And everybody around him knew it and knew it so strongly that they were ready to kill him for it. Now, it is true that people who want to claim that Jesus didn't believe that he was God also don't believe that much from the Gospel of John uh, goes back to the historical Jesus either. So maybe making this point, uh, some people will say, well, that's, that's irrelevant to the, to the concern. But I, we see things like this throughout all four of the Gospels. That we see a very so we don't see things like the word Trinity. We don't see things like the word persons and being. We don't see things like Jesus saying like the words "I am God." Uh, but the point is, what he does say and what he does do makes that point actually more clearly than just saying those words would ever do. Um, but the point is, here we see that the people are expecting Jesus 
to be somebody, and he doesn't fit into that expectation. They think he's just some guy who's come along and made himself equal to Abraham. And Jesus is actually saying um, by his deeds and by his actions that actually he is far, far uh, above where Abraham was. And the people were not prepared to accept that. They wanted a Jesus who did certain kinds of things and didn't do other kinds of things. And Jesus comes in and throws a wrench into all of that. And so that's the real question. When Jesus comes along and says things we don't expect him to say, and when he does things we don't expect him to do, and when he calls us to do things we didn't expect to have to do, will we remain following him or will we become offended to the point where we decide to turn on Jesus because he said the wrong thing in the wrong way to us at the wrong time? Uh, it's hard work following Jesus. Um, and the thing is we have to follow Jesus more closely than we follow people who are willing to turn on if they just say the wrong thing at one point. So uh, my encouragement for you this week is to continue on reading the Gospel of John. We'll come back again tomorrow, and we'll start with the next chapter. Have a good day.